VivaCore is a socially responsible acquirer and developer of clean energy technologies and environmental solutions, primarily focused on soil remediation. And with me is the CEO, James Ballinger, to explain more about the company. So I set it up a little bit there. Tell me more about VivaCore and what, so what the company does. The VivaCore is a, so as you said, the biggest thing we're working on now is soil, the soil remediation mm -hmm. projects. And that where you're taking soil that's contaminated with hydrocarbons and running it through process and getting the oil out and we're able to get it clean enough where, you know, the goal is to get clean enough where you can put it back into the fill without having to go to landfill or dispose of it as hazardous waste anymore. Mm -hmm. And that being soil that's contaminated by spills or when you clean out crude oil tanks, there's a lot of solids in the bottom that typically go to landfill that if we're able to process those and reclaim that oil, then you don't have to put all that to a landfill now. Okay. And that oil can be reused because it's good quality oil. It's just happened to absorb a lot of solids in it. Interesting. And you were just named CEO recently. So tell me about your experience in this industry yeah. and maybe, you know, now that you're in leadership, what are right. your strategy, what's your strategy? So I, for my first life, I was a CPA. I uh, did some time at KPMG in public accounting and got into the energy business working for a client and mainly in the midstream space of uh, energy, which was transportation by truck, rail, pipelines. Built a couple of companies and sold those uh, <clears throat> to major other companies. And 2015, I'd sold my last one and started this uh, new company and built that up to where we had some, a lot of transportation assets and some midstream gathering and storage facilities that two of those which were sold to VivaCore in August. And the play or the, the genesis of that was that we want to be able to bridge the kind of the, from the time that now where we have to burn hydrocarbons till we can get to a point where we have an alternative energy source that doesn't involve that, but taking these ESG technologies and marrying them to the traditional space, whether it be upstream, midstream or downstream, so that we can have the smallest carbon footprint possible to be able to extract these hydrocarbons and use them until we get that transition to a, a clean energy source. Yeah. So that's kind of my, was the vision of us joining the VivaCore family. And that's kind of the focus I have right now is you know, these RPCs, which are the remediation processing centers and trying to, you know, getting those up operational and proving the concept of those and then applying, you know, using that to <clears throat> augment our infrastructure that we have from the two midstream assets that were purchased. Mm -hmm. And that is not just using the VivaCore ESG technology, but potentially using other you know, ESG such as solar or wind, where we can use that to whether power some of our facilities, <clears throat> be able to you know, cut down on electric use or heat so that we're, you know, Still getting those hydrocarbons out, but doing it with you know, with a much more efficient manner as far as you know carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. It's a really interesting company because you're in energy, which was the only yeah. sector that did well in 2022 right. in the stock market. But yet you've got this ESG play too. I mean, how do you see like the macro environment and it's some? It's become controversial ESG and all of that. How do you navigate all of that? Well, I think that we want to be the ESG unicorn and that we actually make money. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> but you've seen a lot of that. That a lot of the ESG plays are only economic if they have the tax credits attached to them. So our goal is to you know, have an economically sound business, but that incorporates these ESG technologies. And that's kind of the, the, my goal and you know, to, to be the differentiator of VivaCore versus the others in the space. Yeah. And you know, the, I, I, people do laugh at me when I say I'm, always, I'm an alternative energy guy. They're like, you've been in the indus energy industry for 30 years. I go, I know, and I see what it does. Yeah. <laughs> and I want my kids' kids to have a place that is still a nice place to live. And you know, so we have to transition to that. But I'm also a realist and know that it's not gonna happen overnight because somebody signs a bill that says we're gonna have electric cars. Mm. That, doesn't, that doesn't get us that transition. So until that happens, you, we need to be you know, responsible and trying to minimize you know, the damage we do by using these hydrocarbons yeah, and until, by getting them out of the out Until of the, the world's ready, right? Yeah, for exactly. the renewable, which I think yeah. we've seen over the past year, we're not quite there yet. Not, not yet. Yeah. I, I kind of look at it as computers of like, the, <laughs> the first computer, it took 20 years to get to the iteration. And then as, you know, 
the time to you know, the time for improvements gets shorter and shorter versus now the the phone you carry in your pocket is 100 times more powerful than the computer on the, the lunar landing module in 1969. So, you know, I'm hoping that you were getting that way with, you know, with the alternative energy and renewables of like, you know, it took us 20 years to get to this point. So maybe the next you know, jump is a 10 year to get us further and then it's five. So that I'm hoping that we're in that, that space where people are working on those things and we're going to get these breakthroughs. There's, yeah. there's a lot of great concepts out there that people are trying to scale now. And you know, that's some of the things that we want to look at is some of these things and how do we take those and, and utilize them, you know, and, you know, in our kind of, you know, um, business plan, our game plan. No, it definitely seems like there's a lot of smart people working on all kinds of solutions for this. Yes. So it yeah. feels like it's inevitable, but not quite there yet. Right. So. And I, there are, and, and I always tell people like when I talk about something, I, I was told this, but until I actually see it work, just because mm. there's a lot of people that can make, that make a lot of claims of, oh, we can, we can take production water and we can make it into drinking water. I'm like, mm. well, I don't really see the CEO taking a glass of that and drink it. <laughs> so yeah. until you actually show me you can do it and yeah. we can actually prove it and scale it up, then, you know, it's still in, you know, it's, it's still not a viable concept. So that's, and it's, there's a lot of that to wade through, but there are a lot of really smart people that are working on it. And mm. I feel like we're, yeah, going in the right direction, and I hope we'll continue to help make progress with it. Now, is this soil remediation process, is that a proprietary? Yes, it process? is. Okay. And it's uh, it's something that we've engineered and, and our, our engineers patented, and we've, uh, you know, we're, we're, that's our focus right now is to get, you know, get it operational and prove the concept with the, with the tank bottoms. And, you know, once we do that, I, I think that we're, we're kind of in that show me mode mm -hmm. with, with everyone is, okay, show me that this works. You've said it does. You know, we've proven the concept with machines. We know it works. We know it's, you know, it, that the results are there. Now we just have to put it to a size of scale where it's economical and it's, you know, producing revenue and it's performing as advertised. Mm -hmm. Now, the um, IEA predicts record demand for oil this year, mainly because China's reopening very quickly. Right. Um, will that impact Vivacor at all? We're not as price sensitive to as like an E&P producer, but anybody that's in the, you know, in the midstream space that says they're not, you know, subject to price fluctuations is not being honest. Now, versus an E&P where you have a dip this way or that way, you have a very steep change. It's much more much, you know, much a slower, um, you know, less, you know, less, in, you know, in steep change in mm -hmm. what, you know, the effect on a midstream business. Because the trans, you know, when even oil goes from 100 to 50, existing wells are still transported. Okay. It's just new wells aren't coming on as much. So whereas the drilling activity may go like that, midstream is more of a kind of, so those are, it will affect some of those. Mm -hmm. The higher prices, I think, you know, there will be con con more drilling. More drilling means there's more spills. There's more stuff to clean up. So that um, could help your business. It could help. So there's, you know, it, you know, for me, just personally, I, I like 65 to $75 oil because when you get the jumps to 100, you get scarcity of resources, mm -hmm. whether it's drillers, whether it's truck drivers to haul the oil because everybody's scrambling for Big employees demand. and, they're, yeah. and you're, 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 you're pricing everybody out. Okay. Um, and, you know, this last round when crude went to 100, the producers really were, it showed restraint and that they didn't go out and just start, you know, drilling a bunch of wells and then all of a sudden now you get this huge you get this huge increase in supply that's and then, right and, and you get these, <laughs> you get these, huge, out, you get yeah. these huge swings mm -hmm. and and that's uh, that's the only thing i know for certain in the oil industry is that you're going to have you're going to have booms and busts that's interesting. and my 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 theory has always been that when things are good you prepare for bad and when they're bad you prepare for good okay that's a pretty good philosophy actually okay. so finally you you just moved the company's headquarters to texas so kind of explain where you were and what was behind that strategy so when we uh, the company's base was originally as a nevada company and the ceo was uh officed between utah and irvine california so we're going to consolidate those and and move all of the operation, well, the, the administration, accounting, finance, all those functions into Texas. It's more centrally located for um, the assets that we have and where we are looking to add additional assets. And just Texas is a very business friendly state and energy. So and I I live there, so it's a little bit of a self serving because yeah. I, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't need to be flying out to Orange County all the time. Yeah. So, yeah. but we. 
uh, and we have a lot of infrastructure there from my existing businesses that we're, you know, we're leveraging that so that um, we're able to do a lot of the stuff for VivaCore without having to take on additional overhead. And, and that's our goal right now is to, you know, keep it lean, get this concept proven, and then really go out and try to, to then, then try to grow it once we've shown what we can do. Yeah, and probably a lot of a workforce that's very uh, yeah. knowledgeable about energy as well. Yes, ma'am, that's there, very, so. very much so. As yeah. far as like, especially like, you know, in the areas of safety, which is crucial, uh, you know, uh, whether it's accounting, um, you know, anything like that, where you got somebody that has the experience already with it, it's a lot easy, It's a lot less learning curve mm -hmm. than someone that has to start from scratch. Yeah, James, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Uh -huh.